The Streammaster electric monitor from Akron Brass uses a 4-inch waterway to provide flows of up to 2,000 gallons per minute while allowing the pump to operate at lower pressures. The Streammaster is designed for use on ladders, platforms, and pumpers. During this educational video, we will review the Streammaster monitor and how to troubleshoot issues that may arise. We will begin by looking at the available controls and how they are set up, then move on to cover system error codes and home sensors. After this, we will look at some basic troubleshooting tips, as well as addressing some specific issues. We will also briefly discuss the optional electric riser and its usage and setup. We will then look at some frequently asked questions about the Streammaster, and finally, we will take a look at where to find additional literature and documentation for this and other Akron Brass products. There are several controls available for the Streammaster which can be used either individually or combined to give multiple control options for a single monitor. The first option, which is the standard or default controller for the Streammaster, is a flush mount control box with stow and deploy. This is typically mounted on the pump panel and has switches to stow and deploy the monitor as well as rotate and elevate the nozzle and control the flow pattern if used with an electric nozzle. The second control option is the tether controller a handheld unit that plugs into a connector mounted on the apparatus. It allows the operator a certain degree of movement around the apparatus and will control the monitor and nozzle, but lacks a switch for stow and deploy. Another option is the wireless remote control. This option allows the operator to move freely about the apparatus while operating the monitor. This unit has controls for the monitor and nozzle like the tether controller, but has an auxiliary button that can be assigned to either stow or deploy, but not both. These controllers are arranged in the order of increasing complexity they add to the system, and depending on which are used, may require slight modification to the troubleshooting process when looking into a problem. But we'll come back to that topic later. Another control option is a controller unique to the Streammaster, which is the six-wire stow controller. It has all the switches that the standard control box does, but uses fewer wires, so fewer slip rings are needed when routing through the turntable of a ladder. To accomplish this, there is no designated wire for stow and deploy, instead using a combination of commands to signal stow and deploy, and the indicator LED is gone as well. This will affect how it is connected to the logic board, as well as how a new stow position is programmed. There are also two other controller types that are available, the joystick and the control box. Neither of these options have controls for stow and deploy. Additionally, all of the various control boxes shown can be ordered in either flush mount or surface mount configuration. If your monitor has the control box with stow, you've probably noticed the indicator light on the front of it that turns off when the monitor is stowed, turns on to indicate that it is deployed, and blinks when the monitor is moving from stowed to deployed and back. Hopefully this is all it has done and your monitor is working properly. Its other function, though, is to blink out error codes as the system registers faults. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but they cover problems such as registering an emergency stop or the monitor not being able to rotate or elevate while trying to stow. These codes are listed individually with descriptions and suggested fixes in the Streammaster installation, operating, and maintenance instructions available on the Akron Brass website. If you are using a system that only includes controllers without an indicator light, for instance, a tether controller with separate stow switch, a controller with six wire stow, joystick, etc., you will need to remove the cover from the logic box and look at the LEDs on the circuit board to see any error codes that are being displayed. If your Streammaster has a stow function, then it contains two sensors, also referred to as limit switches, that are used to provide a limited amount of position feedback to allow the monitor to reach its assigned stow position. It is a limited amount because unlike a potentiometer, the sensors that are used here are simple magnetic switches that use the location of a corresponding magnet to find a single designated position for reference. The sensors are only used for stowing the monitor, so let's examine how they work. When the stow button is pressed, the monitor will rotate left and right to find the center rotation magnet. The nozzle will then move up and down to locate the elevation magnet. This is the default stow position. If a new or learned stow position has been programmed, the monitor will then move to that position. 
I haven't mentioned the deploy feature yet because the Stream Master logic board does not allow you to program a separate deployed position. Instead, it is based off of the stowed position and uses dip switches on the logic board to tell the monitor how many seconds away from the stowed position to move. The following pictures will show where the switch and magnet are located for both elevation and rotation. To locate the sensors on the Stream Master, follow the two wires coming off of the wiring harness that are not connected to the motors or the nozzle. They will go to the back of the monitor and plug into two sockets attached to the monitor. The first arrow is pointing to the elevation sensor. The second arrow is pointing to the cable for the rotation sensor. The sensor itself is tucked between the body of the monitor and the rotation motor. Now let's zoom in a little bit and examine the sensor assembly itself. The most visible part of the sensor assembly, which is the first arrow is pointing to, is not actually the sensor. It is the socket for the wiring harness to plug into. The second arrow is pointing to the sensor housing that screws into the monitor. Both the elevation and rotation sensors are identical and come packaged together if replacement sensors are ordered. The magnets that these sensors react to are internal to the monitor and are not adjustable. Let's move on for now, but we will discuss the sensors again later in the troubleshooting section. We are now going to cover a few principles to use when troubleshooting a problem with your monitor. The basic idea when troubleshooting a problem is to systematically eliminate potential causes or components that could be at fault through testing an observation. Where to start? Ideally, troubleshooting should be carried out with the truck running, since low voltage to the system can cause problems of its own. We recommend a minimum voltage of 11.5 volts under load to ensure normal operation. There are a couple of things that can be checked without opening up the logic box, such as observing error codes and checking the sensors for continuity when they are positioned over a magnet, but most of the diagnostic work is performed at the logic box. If your system is one that is lacking an indicator LED due to using a tether instead of the flush mount control box, you will need to open up the logic box immediately and look for error codes anyway. Before tearing into the wiring, take a look over the system and make sure that all the plugs and connections are fully seated and in the correct sockets. Also, that the wiring in the logic box is correct and makes a good connection to the terminal blocks. The most useful equipment to have available aside from knowledge of the error codes and a wiring schematic for the logic box, is a good multimeter. You will need to be able to measure voltages, as well as check continuity and measure resistance. The other tool that is helpful to have is a short jumper wire that can be used to simulate switch presses at the logic box by bridging the appropriate switch input contacts. So what is the logic box and where do I find it? The logic box is a gray box approximately 6 by 9 inches in size and will be located within 8 feet of the monitor. There is a wiring diagram on the underside of the lid. The U2 logic box, which is not covered by this presentation and should not be opened, has an identification sticker on top of the lid and has two plugs on the side of the box. Now that you know what to look for, let's look at some specific example problems. In this first example, the monitor does not respond to the controls. Now, this is a rather broad statement, so let's begin to narrow down the potential causes. If none of the controls are responding, the first thing to check is that power is being supplied to the terminal block 2, or TB2, pin 2, and is grounded to pin 3. If there is power to the logic box, then move on to terminal block 1 and check pins 10 and 24 which are the common pins that supply power to any controller wired to them. If those have power and the controller is functioning properly, then the terminal pin assigned to a given function, for instance, TB1 pin 8 for deploy, will get power from the controller when the corresponding switch is pressed. If not, the controller is faulty. If the switch input receives power, but the board does not output power to the corresponding motor, then the board itself is bad. So we have determined that the monitor has power and it is responding to the controls, but perhaps the nozzle is moving slowly or it will not elevate all the way up, particularly when flowing water. The first thing to check is that the monitor is receiving enough power to drive the motors at full power. 
If the voltage across pins 2 and 3 of terminal block 2 drops to less than 11.5 volts while moving, it can cause the previously described issues. This is more likely if the monitor and logic box are mounted at the end of a ladder or aerial and a long run of wire is needed to supply power. Steps that can be taken to fix this problem include upgrading the wire supplying power to the logic box, or if that is not possible, adding an auxiliary battery to the logic box. If there is already an auxiliary battery installed, test the battery to make sure it is still holding a charge. If the elevation motor is receiving enough power and it is having trouble trying to raise the nozzle, we recommend upgrading the elevation gearing if this is not already installed. All stream masters produced before July 2010 used identical gearing for the rotation and elevation motors. After that point, the elevation gearing was changed to increase the torque. You can tell which elevation motor assembly you have by comparing it to the rotation motor assembly. If the elevation assembly is half an inch longer, it has the upgraded gearing. If not, there is an upgrade kit available. Alternately, the drivetrain may need to be serviced and inspected for wear. The Streammaster Monitor Repair Guide on the Akron Brass website provides detailed instructions for disassembly and servicing of the monitor. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, the six-wire stow controller has the advantage of a smaller wiring bundle, but it can cause problems if you are not aware that it has been installed or are not familiar with how it will impact certain functions, primarily entering learn mode to program a new stow position. This controller can be recognized by the lack of an indicator LED on the face of the controller. Also, where the controller is wired to the logic box, there will not be any wires connected to terminal block 1, pins 7, 8, or 9, and dip switch 1 should be in the up position. There are several reasons why the monitor will not go into learn mode. One of those is the presence of a six-wire stow controller. That isn't to say that you can't get into learn mode with this controller, just be aware that it requires some adjustments to be made. I won't go into those here, but there are detailed instructions in the Streammaster operating instructions available on the Akron Brass website. Additionally, if dip switch 2 is up, the monitor will not enter learn mode. Likewise, the position of dip switch 8 is important since its function is to enable or disable learn mode. If it is down or disabled, the monitor will still use its learn, stow, and deploy positions, but it will not enter learn mode to program a new position, which is desirable to prevent accidentally setting a new position, but is frustrating if someone legitimately wants to learn a new position and can't get into learn mode. This next condition is tied to specific stow positions. For instance, if the monitor is mounted under a ladder and is stowed with the nozzle tucked up against the underside of the ladder. If the monitor goes to its stow position and either generates an error or doesn't turn off the stow light, it is likely because the stow position that is programmed is too close to the hard stop or limit of travel. If this happens, simply relearn the stow position, but back off slightly from the hard stop. We've already mentioned what to do if controls don't respond, but for this last example, what if you press the switch to stow the monitor and it rotates instead of stowing? There are two likely causes based on the exact behavior of the monitor. If it only rotates to the right as long as the stow switch is held, check to see if you have a six-wire stow controller, which will be missing wires on pins 7, 8, and 9 of TV1, and then make sure that dip switch 1 is in the up position. If it is down, the logic board does not recognize the combination of fog, stream, and write by the controller to signal the stow command, and it treats it as if you had pressed the switch to rotate the monitor to the right instead. On the other hand, if you momentarily press the stow switch and the monitor rotates all the way to the hard stop, then the sensor has not picked up the magnet and the sensor and wiring harness will need to be checked for damage. The sensor closes the circuit when it is over the magnet, so the continuity function on your multimeter can be used on the pins of the sensor plug to check that the sensor is functioning properly. The wiring harness needs to be checked as well. Pin 28 on TB3 is responsible for supplying voltage to both sensors, and pin 26 on TB3 will register voltage when the rotation sensor is over the magnet completing the circuit. Please note though that since there is a resistor in the wiring harness, you should only get around 7.5 volts on pin 26 for a 12 volt system. Can stow be added to a stream master? Yes, you will need to find out if your current logic board supports that function. 
Also, the wiring harness will need to be swapped out for one with the sensor connectors, and the sensors themselves will need to be added. The magnets for the sensors are already built into each stream master, regardless of final configuration. Are grease fittings available for the stream master? Yes, we offer part number 122420, which is a grease fitting that replaces one of the bearing retaining set screws. Lastly, if you ran the monitor into something and damaged it, is it repairable? Yes, it is, although the question to ask is if you are comfortable doing the repair or would like the repair department at Akron Brass to do it for you. If one of the major components, such as the inlet or outlet elbow, is damaged, there may be damage to internal components that is not visible without disassembly. To submit an item for repair, go to the Akron Brass website and click on the repair link under customer service. The Model 3406 electric riser is a powered telescoping unit that provides an additional 12 inches of extension to the overall height of the monitor. This can be used if needed to help clear tall obstacles or to allow the monitor to be mounted in a recessed or protected location and extended for use. You will need to order the electric riser with the Mini Universal controller, which mounts to the side of the riser and connects to the riser motor to control the riser. You will also need the appropriate connections for power, as well as a separate switch to raise and lower the riser, since the Stream Master does not combine the riser operation with the monitor's stow and deploy sequence. The wiring diagram and instructions to install the riser's Mini Universal Controller are located in the installation and operating instructions for the electric riser. To find product flyers, CAD files, specs, and more on the Model 3578 Stream Master Monitor, visit our website at akronbrass.com and search by product name or style number.